out there in Heavenly Father. We are grateful that we are a city which is able, O oh Lord, to provide for the various needs of the citizens who live here and make their living here, raise the family. We are glad that it is, it is so that our necessities, our needs, our, our wants are all fulfilled by the workings and the operation of the City Council who accrues the funds to uh, support the ventures of, of the city and the fulfillment of many necessities. And many of them wish to see our city improve and to see all of its very needs taken care of. I'm sure that those who are on the work of many, many times stand in need of a little encouragement now and then. But we have a good city, its needs, and it's also the appearance of our city, the care and keep of the various areas are all in the attendance of this body which means the people. And so we, we thank each other and uh, are, are glad that those who have been elected and given the job of our city's many maintenance, uh, the hands of those who have a personal interest and take care of various needs in a timely fashion. And for this, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, additions to the agenda. There's five additions to the agenda. Uh, under new business, we need to revisit Stafford County Trash Service Team contract. Under Administration, Stephanie Smith, end of year free swim. Under Administration, expenditure approval for invoice exceeding purchase limits. Under Electrical Department, approval for repair or replacement of an air compressor for the power plant. And under Administration, Superintendent, hire a new superintendent. There any other additions to the agenda? Yeah. All in favor? Um, citizen comments. Mr. Walker? Yeah. Um, you know, we had uh, a big water leak under our house, um, and I didn't know if there was any way we could get some sort of help with a bill to um, increase the cost for us. But it wasn't anything that we could do like regular maintenance and checking pipes or anything. It was underground and it was like 176,000 gallons lost. So I just didn't know if there was any options available to, to help us out with the, the bill. It's going to be like $1,000. Um, I had Pam look it up, and now these are just estimated numbers, but it looks like it's going to be 154000 that went through the, the water. So he's looking at an estimate just for his water, $864.96. He added the electrical to it um, and everything. He's looking at it pretty close to a $1,200, um, bill. But Pam said that doesn't include tax, I and mean, that's just an estimate. 
Yeah. What's your bill for? Like 300. About 300. That's for the entire bill. I guess I don't have a problem. I don't really have a problem. I'm trying to do something. I don't know exactly what I don't know. But I mean, anything would help. I don't know. Can we wait until we, do we actually have them figures? No, no, yeah, not yet. It'll be, it'll be your September 1st bill, right? Mm -hmm. Can we wait until the yeah. figures and then discuss it? Yeah. Works okay. for you. It'll yep. be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Table okay. okay. until the September September first meeting. <laughs> All right. Consent agenda. Approve minutes for the regular meeting of April 4, 2015. Approve appropriation ordinance 08-18-2015 in the amount of nineteen thousand nine hundred. Set a workshop to go over the budget in detail sometime 
in the next week or so. Okay, what does everybody's schedule look like? Sooner for me, the better. Probably. Okay. So, Thursday? Two days from now. Two days from now. What time? Seven. At night? Yeah, at night. Unless you don't want me here. Mm, I can probably make that work. That's fine, Bobby. Everybody else? So the other thing I had was um, the, the scanning software that the city has used is on one computer. It's on this computer on in the, in the clerk's office. So if anyone needs to scan anything or image anything, they have to walk to the copier. You have to put the paper on, you have to turn it online. Once you do that, then no one else can copy or fax or do anything. Then you have to walk back to this computer and interrupt whatever I'm doing to scan it. So um, to me, that's not very efficient for the office, and it's kind of outdated. The last time it was updated was 2012. Um, CIC has an imaging and indexing program that will tie into the budgetary program that you guys, that we have which um, for an example would be one of your invoices, Vicki can actually image that to her payroll to that check. So if you guys would come in and say, hey, I want to know what went with that check, she would just hit view and it would pop up the image for her. So she doesn't have to dig through it, you don't have to find it. The other component with this imaging process is an indexing program. The indexing program, you could set it up with diff different folders um, you can do deposits, so if we wanted to start imaging our deposits before they went to the bank, because once they go to the bank, then you don't have the proof anymore because they don't do it. You can image each check in the deposit. If you, let's say, Mark says that, you know, I don't know what I paid or I don't think I paid that bill, Pam can go to that deposit and pull up that check and actually print him his check back. That's a plus for it. The other thing you can do, use it for is zoning. So you can have everyone's zoning information all indexed into their own little kind of sub order kind of group kind of thing. Um, I think CIC, they, they estimated it would cost the first, for the program would be $2,010. After that, you're looking at $385 a year. That's just for enhancements and for help if the program would go awry. Um, I also had them do an estimate for the scanners. Their scanners would be $1,385. I had Randy do a bid for the scanners. His would be the exact kind of scanners. They're, they'll work exactly the same, they'll duplex, and his are only $6.99. So I was looking at getting three scanners, one for my office, one for my desk, Vicki's desk, and Pam's desk. You got the money in your budget for that? Mm -hmm. We do. The first question I have is would it make sense to have one for the superintendent? You, you can get one. Uh, that would be the, I mean, that would be up to him. I mean, while we're setting everything mm -hmm. up and doing it, would it make sense to go ahead and get it set up and have it available? I would. The, the program that CIC has, it's an unlimited package. So you can hook it up to as many computers as you want to. That was cheaper than buying the individual for each one. So we could. We could do it for the superintendent and have it all set up for him. So when he comes Will they give us a break if we purchase another one now compared to, or if we do four now compared to three now and one later? Or? Um, well, if you're looking at, I don't think so. I think the cost would probably, Randy's cost would probably be about the, the same. It would just be, okay, well, we would just have it all set up for him. I don't, Randy says that his, his would just go up and down fluctuate with the market.
Randy connected with CIC? Randy's not connected with CIC, but he knows the program and he knows he has uh, he has people there. So he would be able to come and set. Uh, they would install the program. CIC would install it, but Randy would come and set up the scanners and make sure they worked with the program. Randy's who does most of our computer work. Yeah. Randy's the IT guy. What you're asking to go with Randy? I, I would probably go with Randy just because his scanners are a lot, his scanners are cheaper, and I've worked with his scanners before. So I would probably just go with Randy. I'm, I'm sure his quality would be just as good as CIC's quality. The other feature that this imaging software would provide is that if we had a piece of property that had plates, violations, all of that information would be able to be indexed to that property address and you would be able to pull it up and see the history right there. Right. Right. It, it is a, it's a really nice software. Um, I've used it before at the treasurer's office. We use it, we used it a lot there. So it is a, the indexing program is a really neat program. Just to be able to have Vicki pull up the invoice for you if you wanted it, or um, Pam, I don't, I'm not quite sure if she could hook it to the utility bills, but she might be able to. Um, I just know the uh, budgetary side and the indexing side. I'll make a motion to go ahead and purchase the scanner for Randy for 2000 if you want three or four scanners. Four scanners? Let's do four. Maybe buy the fourth one or like. Six ninety nine. Huh? Maybe like six ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I'll just make a motion to go ahead and purchase four scanners at six ninety nine ninety nine a piece for Randy Clark and the software for two thousand ten dollars for the CIC. ask the council to see if on September 5th we could do a free end of the year swim for St. John pool from 6 to 8. We would have four guards on duty as well as myself to make sure we had plenty of coverage for all the kids. I just think it'd be something fun to do at the end of the year. I talked to Julianne about it. She said to bring it to you guys and see how what your thoughts were. Um, I know Stafford and Maxwell, I think they do one at the beginning, so I thought maybe the end would be, that might be a good time to do one. Something fun for the kids. All right. Okay. We will open up in September 5th, 6 to 8. Want to extend it an hour? An hour? The lifeguards. Okay. 6 to 9. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you guys very much. So you can put it in paper or whatever then? Yes. I'll get a hold of the newspaper and have them put it in. I'll put a poster up at the pool. I want to talk to somebody over at the Shepherd Center and they can put something up on the bulletin board. Yes. I forget about that one. Yes. I did need to school. School? Yep. They can announce it to school when school starts that we're going to do that. So. Utilities, and 
I said, have you know that home utilities, well, the lights are never on, the windows are always open, she said, it smells to high heaven. So I went over there, and I took Adam with me, and um, it's true, he hasn't had a utility since March, he was shut off for non payment he has at least six dogs, and there could be more in the house, I haven't been in the house. Um, so I had a conversation with him about cleaning it up, and he hasn't been employed for several months. Um, he's kind of isolated here. He doesn't have, well, he's got some family, but he really doesn't have anybody that's going to help him. But the upshot of it is, is that he has done some work. That first picture, that mound, is all dog food, and it is very smelly. I saw him go by yesterday with a load, and I got all excited because I thought I was cleaning it up. I think he made one, maybe one trip out, because most of it's still there. I went by at 7 o'clock this morning, and he can't even breathe after a rain. It's bad. So the, the person that um, reported is correct. It's pretty stinky. So I got out. Um, this building here is full of trash. I didn't get a very good picture because I didn't want to get close to that dog. And the ironic thing is, a couple days later, that dog did bite some. <laughs> Not that dog, but one of his dogs. And it's in the pen. Because none of his dogs have rabies. So anyway, um, I did have a conversation with him. He doesn't have a job. I don't think he has a whole lot of prospects of getting a job. Um, He's called me about every day with something, you know, like, I'm going to go to Great Van and get the money from Salvation Army, which is probably true because I have the Salvation Army check with the staff account. I did give him money for gas. I gave him some money for food from the Salvation Army. And um, I just don't know how you want to proceed. Because it's my understanding a city, city code enforcer has to do the rest of this, and we don't have one at this time. Is that correct? So I don't know. I've got 11 violations just on housing and three on the dogs. So I don't know what you want to do, how you want to proceed. I, like I said, I have not been in my house. Any ideas? I was going to say, and this is the first time I've heard of these, but you know, typically in, in other municipalities, you have to have our office would handle any kind of uh, uh, either prosecution, there's two routes, you can prosecution through uh, uh, municipal court, okay, and if somebody doesn't have a job and they don't intend to get a job and they just don't have means, it's kind of a, a dead end uh, because you're just never going to get them to pay the fines, the fines will stack up and you're just never going to take care of things. The other option is uh, the environmental codes provide for uh, a notice process and then the adoption of a resolution uh, and then the hiring of somebody, whether it be city staff or somebody else, to abate the problem. Um, and then those can be charged back to the, to the property. Either way, it's all like a record below the building it, program. It, it's, 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 there's a means to get paid that way eventually. And we can solve tax sales, you know, just don't get those things back, but you get somebody else in the property. Uh, but it, 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 it's, it's a huge problem everywhere. We've got to give them a due process right to attempts to clean them up themselves. Um, quite frankly, if, if you want to give me the option, I'd say I would go through the process of, of going through the abatement process, just because it becomes this endless cycle. And then you get somebody in the community that thinks that you're messing with somebody and then they start doing things. And then you have all these people not cutting their grass or whatever just to get back and you know, help out as well. things. And just, just from experience, it's just, it, it costs more money, but it, it takes care of the problem. Is it something that Draft, have you draft a couple of letters for the different scenarios? It, it, it can be all handled by, by staff, just on it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, it, it, it can be done uh, through uh, uh, just a form letter, okay? And then the statute provides how that uh, notice is supposed to be posted um, and then how the 
much time you can give them. Then the health officer comes back and comes to the city and says, this has happened, um, nothing's changed. I'm uh, requesting the city to take further action. The city adopts a resolution saying, okay, our people are going to enter your property within, I can't remember if it's 10 or 14 days, they clean up the mess and because it makes substantial progress on resources. So you're saying the city employees would have to like, take a bobcat and a bucket truck? And if, if, if that's what, yeah, I mean, they could. Yeah. We, you could use city employees. Uh, the, the biggest problem, you don't know what's in those cars. Would be like, in those Pardon cars. me? You, you really don't know what's inside those cars. Well, so, yeah, this, this guy doesn't have any junk cars. That's the only thing he doesn't have. He's got microwaves, he's got fans, he's got tires, he's got uh, and also, as the officer, I know you don't want to hear this, but you have the authority to go on to his property. I do. I to do. take pictures. Or... I have. I took it from the alley. You know, I wasn't invited in the house. So <laughs> I'd love to go in there. So, um, so is that what you're going to do is draft a letter and send yeah, it to Yeah, we'll, we'll get letters going and get a process How started. Does he the dogs? I asked him that, and he said that um, he has a drip in his bathtub. And I said, if your water shut off, then you have a drink in your bathtub. So I don't know, I just do. So I had Ruben go check, and he said, yes, the water is off. Now he has a drip in his bathtub. So I said, how do you flush the toilet? From the bucket that he puts in the bathtub. That's what he says. I don't know how he has a drip in his bathtub. It's been with him for five months. $1,600. And then I started to reconnect the, and I know one other lady called me on her deal that was 22, and when she, I guess she came up with the money, and when she got the money, they couldn't put her back up because her outside wiring didn't even put. So she moved to Maxville and started another line of credit. It's a, it's a problem. It stinks, and it's bad. And you're all welcome to go by. City have a minimum or maximum of dogs? Yes, yeah, four dogs, yeah. four adult dogs, and eight men. Right here. Yeah. I shall order harbor not more than four dogs of six months of age or older and one litter of pups. If you have more than that, you're supposed to ask for a kennel one. And he's got at least six. One of them's in the dog pound now because he's under arrest for five months. And there's things that can be done there. I mean, one of the problems with that is that the city can take control of one of the dogs or some of the dogs or all of the dogs. The other thing is that uh, those fees for the dogs, because they're going to be kennel somewhere, can be charged back to the Then you start this process and you just can't, you just can't collect the money. It, 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 it is difficult. Mm -hmm. Can you shut that for us, please? Okay. How many, how many oh, months is that? I can't remember. That band? Yeah, that was a band. Oh, uh, it's down below, Jeff. Does it pop off? Uh, they don't know. Yeah.
after they shut off Little Mountain. Well, it was shut off in March. Yeah, but how did he incur sixteen hundred dollars up until the point? Because I thought it was a Monday morning. What about the $2,200? It should be at the maximum. It should have been sixteen hundred dollars for the month. It should have been shut off. So the bill's running sixteen hundred dollars a month. No, not that house. Fifty, what 50 sixty dollars, maybe. How's coming to run and shut off before? Good question. Yeah, the cheapest way to do it is have the city go in there and clean it up. But, you know, the other part of that is that ground's so saturated with dogs around that it's going to stink forever. But at least the dog poop would be gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe the tires and maybe the, the old trash. microwave and the okay. trash. Oh, on this, uh, on that one? That fan is gone. I know, but have you been to the back side of that house? No. There's an open pool and trees and boards yeah. and nails. And oh, I've not been back there, no. If you drive down that alley, that pool is wide open where any you kid have a can. Swimming pool. And yeah, that's wide open, you it's say? wide open where a kid can. He's got piles of boards back oh, there. Wow. But any kid can. What are you talking just about? On the back side of, back side of his house. Yeah, if I could add yeah. just two more cents to this conversation, I guess, over the years trying to come up with a process that is cheap for everybody, one of the other things is you just have to accumulate them all at once and do them all at once. And then you cut down on excess fees and excess hiring of well, outside help. You get and started everything. and there's no stopping place sometimes. Yeah, yeah sometimes. So I don't know what you want to do about the house. Um, the other thing I brought up was on my morning runs around town, I just kind of pretend like I'm new to town and what would I think if I moved here. And so I've been taking pictures of cars that um, are what I consider junk cars. Um, this one with the van, the van is gone, I don't know what that, this van is gone. So that's positive. That's all cleaned up though, isn't it? I think so. Um, these are still there. Yeah, they've been living there. That's still there, and now there's another car next to it. It's still there. But it? I thought the van was gone. The van is gone. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. something's happened down there because yeah. it looks better. Yeah, it but does. there's still two junk cars in there. Yeah, and on the back side of that is a disaster. Yes. Have I got any pictures in here? That was a fire. I have a fire house, actually. <laughs> yeah. And then I was going to show. Um, I don't have a picture of it, but that gentleman that said the prairie he actually has two in his yard, two junk vehicles mm -hmm. in his yard. So, that's why I thought he was here. I thought about somebody talked to him. Yeah. This, um, the Moore house is, <coughs> I don't know what the inside must look like. But. On those, can we send them letters? Do you send them letters? What happens there? Well, I, I have no authority in the city of St. John. We send them letters. Be a city thing. But these two cars of hers are clear full of stuff. Oh, no. You know, these two cars. Where, where is this one? Oh, that's on uh, West 2nd. 400 block of West 2nd. And so is that. And uh, that one house, it's dilapidated. I had those sent to me on email. I didn't take those, but they got included in the. In the this van here had never moved and it's got windows busted out of it. I don't know if it runs, but doesn't run. I don't think he lives there. I don't know. This is cleaned up. Yeah, this is all cleaned yeah. up. This 425 a second. And I tell you, my dawn was great helping with that. We got that cleaned up in a couple of days. So. And somebody in California owns that out there somewhere. Yeah, they bought that on the internet that. and it burned down the night they got here, remember? Well, and people do live there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We went back to California the same day. Yeah. So it's kind of a awareness raising session, I guess, of things that are around. But if they live next to me, I would not be happy at all, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll work with um, the city attorney, get some form letters drafted, and okay. then um, have staff this start sending really information. That's all cleaned up. Yeah, yeah um, the people that live there moved to Linden, Kansas, and she actually got somebody cleaned up before the trash got out of there. So, 
I kind of appreciated that. I was just shocked that I was appreciated. Which one is that one for? For the West Second Street trash dump. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know who was that. Maybe Mike say Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. A lot of times people are, you know, real compliant and they'll do what they can and do the best they can and maybe this gentleman on his fourth is, or his first is, you know, like I said, he's pretty limited on his resources. He told me he's going to get a job in Kinsley. I said, how are you going to get there? And, uh, seriously, how are you going to get there? Shut them off on the 24th, March 24th. But it's accumulation of, I would almost say, five bills. But I would have to get Pam to make sure I looked it up right since I'm not used to doing it. But so they shut them off on the 20th, March 24th. So on his log saying so that that's this, when they shut them off. This would have been accumulation of five months' bill. Yeah. We've got policy in effect that you shut them off the 10th of the following month that they don't pay them. Sure. <coughs> They have to pay, they pay part of it? Remember they can't. Yeah, yeah, but happens. if you remember what I've been raising, you know what about the past approach to this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They pay part of it? Does they, that go towards the Yeah, but the, the way that Pam explains it to me is that they, they in the past, you guys have wanted them to pay the current bill. Right. But like the past bills, they could set them up like on a payment plan to, to pay mm -hmm. those up. Because if you don't get them to, to pay the current, then all that's going to do is just keep cycling over, and then you get this huge, this huge bill and stuff. If uh, I, I would have to ask Pam if he was on a, a payment agreement. I, I don't think so. That's the only way. Looking at his bills, I mean, they averaged like from one hundred and eleven dollars to like the most was two hundred dollars. So for him to accumulate to, to get six, months. yeah, I mean, for longer, for longer. But I was, I mean, I can find out from Pam tomorrow, and she could tell me exactly how many bills and everything. Dogs at large, I guess, was that the dogs with the, on East First? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. So. There are dogs at large in the mornings, but. Yeah, I think that was I've only been bitched twice. I only got bitten <laughs> once. So. Yeah. So, um, got any more questions for me? I need any more information? So have you talked to all these people, Doris? No, I haven't talked to anybody but these. Okay. Uh -uh. Because I so the city's gonna write. read in your ordinances, it has to be like your public officer, your code enforcer that does that kind of stuff. I can tell you what another town did with them. If they paid somebody to go on the property, and I don't know if it's trespassing or if they have to be okay, but they got the bins off the junk vehicles to find, and then they ran it through dispatch to see who the last owner was. They sent them a registered letter, and it, they either cleaned it up or they brought the car crusher to town. And they drug them in and crushed them, and then they got the city up the money for the car. Okay. But do if you uh, research that yeah. and bring for, it to council? Yeah, I sure can. Thank you, Doris. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have the information on Ruben's cars? I do. Okay. Since he's not here. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're on that. I don't think they I need an executive session to discuss two summer hires for parks. Probably about 10 minutes. I'll turn to open session at 7.50. So moved. Second. The reason being non personnel. Oh, I'm sorry. Reason being non elected personnel. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. <coughs> um, I need another executive session to review applications for open water and sewer positions. Um, 15 minutes, so returning at 8.05. So moved. And the exemption being done. The exemption being non-elected personnel to include mayor, council, and the city attorney. 
Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Five off. I hire Corey Tankro. I hope I pronounced that right. That's right. For the city superintendent position, on a starting salary of fifty-two five a year. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Five zero. Tentative start date is October twelfth. Maybe sooner. Two things. First one, um, I came into work Monday morning and we had no air in the tanks at the plant. The compressor was running. We'd broken a brass valve sometime overnight. The guys check it every day on the weekends when we're gone. But uh, when we got the line fixed and the valve fixed and turned it back on, the unloaders were stuck on it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we start those engines with air. We have three reserve tanks. Between the three of them, they probably hold about 1,200 gallons capacity and so we have to have about 200 pounds to start them so I called Bob I knew Bob would be out and around that early and so I called him and he came down and uh, helped me get the flywheel pulled off of it and we got it on a pickup and we took it to Wichita um, we have an old compressor down there that was put in in 1964 that we used until we bought this one this one we bought in 1984 um, the guy was hoping he could tear it down when I got there to see what was wrong with it and what it would cost. It didn't happen. Uh, he was shorthanded in the shop when I got there. Um, Bob and I discussed it a little bit and felt like a rebuilt compressor like this one's about $5,800. A new one's about $7,800. But we felt like if it cost much over what half of what a, a remanufactured one would cost that we'd just as soon spend the money on one that had been through the factory and redone. Um, I don't know when I'm going to hear from them. I hope any day. Uh, we're limping that little compressor along that we've got. We've got two tanks full of air now in case we have to start an engine. But um, it's going to be something that I would like to have approval to take care of as soon as the need arises so that we can get it done and get it back in. Uh, without the air, we can't start one. So, anyway. How old did you say the one was that broke down? The old, the one that I took down there was we put it in 1984. So it's 30 close to 30 old. years. It's 30 years old now. So, but I, you know, it was throwing some oil, and uh, I felt like that it probably would be better served just to take it down there where they're a, a certified Quincy distributor. Um, and let them go through it and make sure that everything was right when it came back. So what's the difference between the reman and other than price? They just go through, you know, they go through them and they put them back to what original specs are as close as they could get to them. Right, they, but what I'm saying between the reman and the new, what's the difference? Just the price. I mean, it's it's an old block, is what it is. That they'll go right. through just like you would with the motor, you know, on a car. But and they'll, they'll give you the same warranty on this reman as you get on a new no, one, and no, that's what I'm asking. No, you don't. What, what's the and, difference? And, and the new warranty is a year. Um, the old warranty is 90 days. So, and they take your and they take your carcass. You know, so basically you're trading in a carcass and and right. 5,800 bucks is what you're doing to get a reman. I'm hoping so, they can fix this thing. Between right, and we I mean, too. Basically, for two thousand dollars, you're saying all they're going to do is give us another nine months, nine months worth of. Uh, yeah, and I warranty. mean they run every day. I mean, they run 24 hours a day, you know, as need to be. So, um, I mean, the money's in the budget. I've got several places I could take it from to do either one. It's just whatever council decides to do. Well, I'd say if we have to buy a new one, we buy a new one, not a remand. But that's just my. Opinion. I mean, this one served us pretty well. I mean, they run. Was it brand new? It was brand new. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was say, I'm all, on this one, I was trying to figure out what the difference is, but I would rather have new than remake. Yeah. I mean, if I you're going to spend the money. Spend I mean, we're money. hoping we can fix it for, you know, for a couple thousand dollars, but as of yet, that remains to be seen. So. And then my question is, is if we fix it for a couple thousand dollars, how much longer is it going to last? If it's well, I, we've oil? worked on it a number of times over the years. I mean, this is not the first time it's had problems, but like I say, it runs seven days a week, 365 days a year. So. Yeah, but it don't run containers. Oh no, no, no. 
And I don't know how long it had been running when I walked in there at 10 till 7 yesterday morning. But evidently not a real long time because normally when it runs for a long period of time, if it gets too hot, it'll blow a fuse and it was still running. So evidently, I would say not more maybe than a couple hours, but who knows, you know. But um, it's just one of those things that without somebody there, you know, you never know. But uh, we don't have a lot of problems with it, but we do have some. So. So what I'm hearing is that we want to try and fix it, but if we can't fix it, we want to go new as opposed to remanufactured? Yeah, I would. Yes. Okay. All right. You got any kind of threshold you want to go by? We, we, a new one you said was what? $7,800. So okay. if we can fix the old one for under $3,500. $3, okay. All right. What do you think? Spend thirty five hundred dollars on a thirty year old air compressor. I, I said if we couldn't if we couldn't fix it for fifty or sixty percent of what the rebuilt one was, we'll fix it if we didn't. That's what I told Jeff when he asked for. So twenty five hundred. Uh, I mean, but we were talking about a reband compressor. So somewhere in the three thousand dollar neighborhood. Three, I'd say four yeah. five to three thousand okay. if it's that. Get it fixed. If it's more than that, get a new one. Get a new one coming. Okay. All right, that's what I'll do. Um, the other thing that I have is, like LaDonna told you earlier, for um, well, I, she passed you out a couple of pages. Mark had had some questions for LaDonna, and I don't think she can answer all of them. About We've had a lot of, I, you've all heard it about the, the higher utility bills this month, you know, and stuff. And what this is, uh, the second page, this is a note. I talked to Greg on the phone quite a while this morning for me and G. Greg's a guy, if you don't know him, he's a guy that figures all of our stuff. When it comes to Midwest Energy, he calculates some other things for us too. But uh, this second page is a graph of uh, everything from August of 09 to June of this year. Now, if you look at that graph, and this being in black and white, you can't tell really like you could when I saw it in color. But you'll see um, in, I think it was July of 10, June of 10, in June of 15, you'll see two dark lines up there. And in June of 2010, our cost was 5.4 cents higher, 5.4 percent higher than what it was this last month. So in five years' time, uh, you know the rate has has um, it's been fairly comparable. Now, starting in March of 14, you see that it's raised up about a cent or a cent and a quarter on what our wholesale rate was. The reason for that was that's when the contract was renewed with Midwest Energy. Before that, we were on Westar's contract, and they fulfilled the contract until the contracts came due. At that time, the council had chosen to add a 1.1 megawatt cushion, if you want to call it that, like having another engine in the plant in case we would have to run. We get that 1,100 kilowatts a month, but we do have to pay for it and it turns around to be about a cent, maybe a cent and a quarter a month on what your total bill would be. So um, that's the difference, but the rates have not changed since 1984. That was the last time we did a rate. And Greg tells me, and I remember this pretty well, in the mid-90s when uh, uh, they started marketing electricity, they, they deregulated electricity Why? Uh, that gave the larger producers the opportunity to be able to sell across the country. You could sell your excess capacity if you wanted to buy it out of Florida, you could buy it out of Florida. It didn't make any difference. But there's a transportation cost goes with that. So they allowed the bigger companies to get rid of their excess capacity. So we buy excess capacity in the summertime to fulfill what we need based on what our winter rate is, just like any other community in the country. And, and so that fluctuates what our energy, our excess energy charge is every month. And we pass that along to the customers uh, up until just after the year 2000, the city absorbed that cost. And we had some debt service to pay on uh, that Caterpillar engine, on the switchgear, some other stuff. And the city was losing money every year to the tune of about a quarter of a million dollars. And they were eating that and, and sending the 089 cent kilowatt, which is the base kilowatt price, onto the customer. At that time, they chose instead of raising the rates, to pass that energy charge along. And we make eleven hundredths of a cent off of what we pay on this. 
So we don't, we just make enough to maybe cover the paperwork is about all and pay for part of that excess capacity charge. So that's basically how it works. But if you look, if you would look at your bill from uh, this last month and look at it back in December, take your kilowatt or take your cost and divide your kilowatts into it, you'll find that there's very few hundreds of a cent difference in what your, your price per kilowatt is. So uh, I hope that answers your question. You know that, um, you know, we haven't raised them. I don't think with the reserve that we have, we're going to look at raising them anytime soon. Right. So, you know, I, and I know a lot of customers are upset. And between LaDonna and I and Pam, we probably figured 25 bills in here. And they were all within just a few hundreds of a cent difference between December's and that. So, you know, if you don't use it, it won't turn. That's the way it works. So, anyway, the that's all I have. The conversation you and I had had when we were talking about this same issue is what it would cost if we were generating. Oh, it's around 19 cents right now at the price of diesel fuel. Is about what it is. Yeah, and you're buying it, you know, last month was probably 4.9, I think. 4.99, yep. 4.90 or 99 or something like that. With the energy charge on top of it, so with that energy charge included. So, you know, it's it's quite a bit cheaper to still go ahead and purchase it. And there are some communities, there is, if you've probably heard of it, maybe you have it, called the Southwest Power Pool. And there are communities um, within the state, one of them being Ellenwood, in fact, that close, that buys power through the Southwest Power Pool, but their rates are not as cheap as what we get. We have one of the few really good contracts. There's only three cities hold a contract like the one that we have, us and two others, one of them Stafford, the other one Sterling. Everybody else buys theirs from a third party, the excess. So they pay quite a bit. I could tell you, but I won't, not out here. I could tell you what the difference in the cost is. It is extreme. We have a very good deal. We really do. So, anyway, that's all I have. With that being said, Jeff, I brought this up two or three different times. Uh, that power plant can't be run on natural gas? No, not anymore. We took the wheat in 95 or 96, you know, we'd run on gas before that. And, and, um, West R10, whoever owned the gas company at that time or whoever's name was on it, put in a new turbo gas meter. The base cost on that gas meter was $1,500 a month, whether you turned it or you didn't. And at that time, the council chose to pull that meter out where we were running just for standby only and uh, not pay that $1,500 and use it towards the generation if we had to have it. So, and the two, and the other two engines that run off of it. They were all combined together with old gas meters. We'd had to update ours so we could separate the cost between the engines. There was about a seven or eight thousand dollar tariff to trying to do that. Yeah, you know, Mel said it'd take ten thousand dollars to put it back on natural gas. Yeah, and that's probably close. But I think it's something. Well, you know, we have to, we have to pay that fifteen hundred dollars a month whether we turn it or we don't. This year we've run, you know, well last year all together I think we ran twenty nine thousand kilowatts through the whole year. For, for standby. And that so, meter costs fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So it's gonna cost you Is that through KPNL? Yeah, or one oak or whoever it is, yeah. It costs you fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars a year to keep that meter. The other councils before had felt like it wasn't cost effective. Eighteen thousand. We keep thirty thousand gallon of storage of fuel. Right now we've probably got about fourteen, fifteen thousand between winter and summer fuel. We haven't bought any diesel in two years. I mean, you know, we've we, uh, we don't waste it. I, I test run them some, but we don't waste them a lot because we know the cost of fuel is high. You know, so uh, uh, the cost of trying to put that meter back in and getting everything changed back over just wasn't feasible. They didn't feel like former councils didn't. So that's where we're at. So we run on straight fuel on that. But in the fall and in the winter, we can run that Caterpillar and it runs quite a bit cheaper than the others do, you know, when, they, when the load comes down. But is that? Are you sure that's still in effect at fifteen or sixteen hundred? Or yeah, I'm sure it's probably higher than that now. Even with the price of gas, I'm sure it is. I could I could find out, but I'm sure it's not any cheaper. Can you go ahead and check, follow up on that, please? I'll do some checking. I sure will. The thing is, we can't generate, can we? No, we can, but it's not cost effective. Hasn't been with the contract we have now. We can't. No, only if they call and tell us that it's unavailable. That's the only time we can generate with our contract. We can't just go in and say, hey, we're going to beat you up this week because we can, you know, we can buy gas at such and such. The problem is, is that when they deregulated all this, 
natural gas became a commodity for everybody. There are there are guys as close as Pratt in the power plant that those guys they generate quite a bit and they monitor the gas price on the trading floor by the minute. And if they want to contract so much gas for this month or next month, they'll buy it on the spot market. But the problem is, is from June the 15th to September the 15th, that that market is so big anymore that the expense is very great. It's nothing to spend, you know, for where our excess energy charge and stuff come from now. It's nothing to pay $400 a megawatt for, 40 cents a kilowatt. You know, for that 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Well, what I'm saying is, is, we couldn't even do it. No, I mean just the ten thousand dollars alone to upgrade to natural gas. You'll, um, I mean, you'll never get it back. You're Chances never going to get that back. No, no, I mean you can't buy it for, or you can't generate it. You can't even come close to generating it for six cents a kilowatt. No, and the other thing is too that when I take gas off of that four-inch pipeline, I have to call them and contract gas before I can ever crack that meter open. I can't just take it off the line because it'll suck a town dry. So, I mean, you can check into it, but I think it. I it's, no, you can't. It you, your contract will tell you you can't, right. unless it becomes unavailable. That's the only way, and it have to be an extremely hot day. And we've had some extremely hot days that we've never been called yet. So, they don't even send us a contract price anymore. They used to send it every morning. They'd come on the fax machine. Haven't seen one for over a year since the contract changed. That's the last time we got one. So, And then the manpower to do it on top of that, you know, it, it, it can be fairly expensive. It would be pretty lucrative to try and do it. I mean, you said you only generate, what, 29,000? We made 20, I think 29,400 last year is what we made. Just to... Emergencies and that stuff, you know? Yeah. Just the $10,000, I mean, that's 34 cents mm -hmm. a kilowatt. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's all I have. John? Uh, <clears throat> I know this is splitting hairs, but last meeting you guys, in response to Ruben's idea about putting signs on the back of um, benches, asked me to look into it because of a, a previous legal opinion. And while there's nothing in state law that would prohibit the city from doing uh, such a thing, it probably violates your zoning regulations because of prohibitions on signs on publicly owned property. Um, there is, we do have um, a, a, an exemption part of the zoning code which could be changed to allow such a thing. Like I said, it, it, we're, we're splitting hairs whether putting somebody's name on the back of a bench is considered advertising or not. A name, probably not. A phone number, probably. So it, it kind of depends on what the city wants to do. I know we've had zoning and sign issues in the past. So. Okay, somebody catch me up. They wanted to go around to the local businesses to see if they'd buy benches. park benches and have their name engraved on them and donate it to the city for the parks. Okay. Be a source of advertisement. And I don't know, you guys have to come Or a memory of or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, a memorial or yeah, in memory so. of and Memorial. We were told that it was a no-go, don't, so that's the reason I brought that up, that we needed to make and sure we, that we could do this or not. We looked through the, the minutes, and we could find where you guys talked about it, and then you guys tabled it to old business, and then you had it like four or five months removed from old business. But there was never a reason why you moved it and stuff. Um, you know, the research, the research I did on it for you guys, the, there's a couple of cities that do it. They say it works really well. Others say it's the whole emotional attachment people put on that. And if it gets vandalized or if it gets damaged, what what is the city going to do? Um, a lot of them say that you want them to donate it to the city, but then that way it's still the city's. And so the city can dictate where it goes and what you do with it and everything. So if you end up doing it, you probably want a really good contract laying everything out for them so that way they know exactly what's going on. Like somebody can't come and say, hey, that's my bench and I'm going to take it back to my house and I'm going to sit it here because it has my grandfather on it. 
Well, the way I took it, the only thing we were going to do was kind of like a business deal. We were still not going to do in memories or memorials or whatever you want to call it, correct? Well, I... On this deal that was brought up. In I the, only, the, only, just, yeah. the only problem you run into is when you do it as a business and it's considered advertising. But otherwise, I won't see it as a problem. Yeah, you would have to do it with an individual. You have to get the zoning board to give you special approval. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just amend the zoning board. Right. Yeah. That was, that was a one. Okay. New business. Stafford County trash contract. Yeah. I've had several concerns. And I think if you'll remember when we wrote this contract, we put some things attached to it. If you remember uh, that they needed to comply with before uh, we acknowledge that contract. And I can't find my copy of it. And this here is on here. But we've got some things that uh, I can't remember what was wrote. Can you throw it? They were supposed to do also, some upgrading, yeah. upgrading and have some equipment. Some they were hydraulic going to leaks, uh, huh? mufflers, hydraulic yeah. leaks, mufflers. Yeah. They were supposed to take a little pride in it. Exactly. And I, have, have I haven't seen that. And so I'm, I revisited this a little bit and then I was looking at the deal there. It looks like I'm the only one getting this one. Or a different thing. And I just was kind of curious what you guys would, what's your, have you been hearing anything or? Oh yeah, you get hammered about church all the time. Yeah, I have I been to a couple That's the constant. And I had a guy call me at 5 o'clock in the morning the other morning, he said, are you awake? And I said, yeah, I am now. <laughs> and he said, trash truck just woke me up. I kind of thought that I could take that point. If, if we can, I'd be all up for revisiting that contract. Would you? Yes, sir. Well, then I'd like to, I'd like to revisit it. Maybe we'll look at it. What was it? Do we know when it was approved? Yeah, February, February, March of last year. I was going to say, can you look at it, the, the contract, and see if we can revisit it or what we can do?
kind of officer do you have? What all we got to do on the playground equipment? Just get a little more concrete yet, or what? No, the concrete's done. Uh, we read meters Monday, so that put the brakes on that. It rained last night, so we stayed out of there. Uh, we got a little sprinkler work yet to do, and we're ready to put the stuff in. Pull the forms, put her in. We're ready to go. So if it dries out a little bit, where we can back a truck in there, where we can dump them in, you know, we'll we'll try and get it done here pretty quick. So we're the ready to. Guys did a pretty good job of healing that up. Oh my! I worked on it before they got there. When they <laughs> called me, I took a bucket of water and a float, and I started straightening it out. Oh my! That was a mess. That come out a lot better than what I was anticipating. Didn't nobody would fess up to it. That's what I hear. Invoices that you stated. 
second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, you have that conversation that just won't happen. Is there any additional conversation? Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Um, old business. One built, go or if one built. Yeah. You guys should have had in your packet, I believe. Uh, you guys wanted to see exactly how much they were going to charge. It's a female. Yeah, see how much they were going to charge for the agreed upon procedures. Looks like it's going to be uh, $2,500. Budget. No, that is for to the audit. The audit. Okay. We still need to approve that to do that audit. Is that correct? Is that what we're No, you guys have already, already approved for them to go ahead and do the audit. Okay. This yeah. is Just to. Just Last last week we gave you a a letter from them showing them what what the procedures were, like what they were going to look over in the audit. This, yeah. And uh, then you guys wanted to know how much they were going to charge, so Vicki went back and, and asked for an email, you know, asked for that. I think we were waiting for you guys to check off what you wanted on the letter, and since that was all a go, now this is saying this is how much it's going to cost for them to come and do that agreed upon okay. procedure. And then the second item under. Um, Old business um, is going to stay under old business for the time being, and probably until the new superintendent is hired, and I have a chance to discuss it with him. Or starts not hired, I'm sorry, and I will have the opportunity to discuss it with him. The, the only thing is on that county ceiling deal. If that's honestly something that we need to let the county. I mean, if it's I don't so know if they got a bid on it yet. I, don't, no, I, I haven't know. seen yeah. a bid. He was, on waiting. It. Okay. he was waiting on Phil to get him a bid, is what he's told me. So. Okay. Cool. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay.